Alors, bonsoir tout le monde. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this meeting of May the 14, 2018, a regular municipal council meeting for the city of Dieppe. Once again, welcome to one and all. Dear colleagues, let's have the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. So, this meeting is called to order. Confirmation of the quorum by the clerk. Yes, we have a quorum. Let's proceed with the conflict of interest, if there's any. No conflict of interest. Now the adoption of the agenda as presented, moved by Councillor Leblanc, seconded by Councillor Cormier. On the question, no question on the agenda. All those in favor that we accept the agenda as presented, say aye. Contrary minded, nay. Carried as presented. Item seven, presentation, inquiries, petition. 7.1 inquiries by council members to the uh, Kodiak Regional RCMP Superintendent who's with us. Good evening, welcome. Is there any members who would have a question for the superintendent? No comments, no question. The floor is yours. Thank you, Your Worship, councillors. My I don't have much to say, S simply that you know in 2017 there were 4,446 uh, call for service for the city of Dieppe. That represents 14% of the total calls that was 33,656. So, in comparison, I don't have the statistics for the previous year, but but I can easily ha have them for the next meeting, just to make a comparison between the two. So we are, we start our preparation for the summer months, uh, the project for the highways. Uh, my two colleagues on the right are with me just to inform the people who are on the road. It's always in the news. And I want to assure you that uh, we will be visible. So the other statistics are on the website. Besides that, I don't have much else to add. Thank you. If there's no further question, if there's no question for the members, thank you once again, Mr. Fischel. You are welcome to stay, as you know, but we will understand if you have to leave. 7.2, presentation on uh, Municipal Emergency Measures Plan. Our chief, uh, good evening, good evening, Your Worship, members of council. Tonight, I'm happy to present our new emergency plan, emergency measures plan. I would like to mention the ch chief arsenal from the city of Moncton who came to show his support. The plan, as you know, was coordinated between the three uh, municipalities of Riverview, Dieppe and Moncton. Before you go any further, I would like to take this opportunity once again to underline the excellent work that our uh, firefighters, your employees have done during the last four weeks, really, to help in the Oromocto area. I think it's what we saw on social media and on, uh, in the media were an, was an excellent job. When these things happen, we don't like to talk about it because that's not what the news is. The news is really the incidents, the people who have trained. But it's important to mention our contribution once again to thank your employees for a, a job well done. I will certainly 
uh, nine firefighters who were there for nine, uh, nine days. They were long days, but the experience will be added to our municipality. It will be a benefit. It's an experience that you will not have to use here, we hope. As mentioned, the plan was a cooperation between the three municipalities. In other words, the same plan for the three municipalities. A small overview of my presentation. I'll begin with a small introduction. We'll talk about the city council responsibilities. There will be an overview of 10,000 feet of the municipal emergency response plan and the approval of the plan. As you know, we have planned for emergencies, uh, uh, big emergencies. There are two events coming up. The Congrès Mondial Acadien, the Francophonie festivities, where our plan will be used. Uh, so I hope we won't use it uh, for an emergency, but as a preparation for these events. As you know, our first uh, interveners meet a crisis. It was constituted for abnormal situation, situation that requires a little bit more coordination. And the plan understands four pillars. The first pillar is the mitigation. Mitigation is the effort, the activities that we do to try and reduce the consequences of an event. When we rebuilt the Amero Street in the marsh, it was an example of uh, uh, mitigation where if there's any other marshland in the future that this will be used. The second pillar, preparation, preparedness, is the plan as the one we're presenting tonight. Also, preparedness is to exercise the plan. It's important to prepare the plan. On June the 13th, in a few weeks from today, we will participate in the provincial exercise. It's the first time where there is such uh, an exercise where every municipality is asked to participate. They will simulate a large event that will affect the whole population of New Brunswick. Uh, Dieppe will be uh, asked to participate. The third pillar is the response. The phase where the first interveners reach the need of our citizens, as you mentioned. We spent some time in the St. John River to help uh, those people who were affected by the flood. The last one is the recovery. That phase is where, along St. John River, that started on the weekend, it's the longest phase, one of the most difficult. It's to reestablish and hoping that we will reestablish maybe better than before the events. So a purpose of that phase is to build better than it was before. Build is not only buildings, but a community as a whole. The whole population must be rebuilt. A few words uh, on the city and the council responsibilities according to the uh, Emergency Measures Act. Uh, you have to appoint a director. We appointed myself as director of the Emergency Measures Organization for the City of Dieppe. Another one is to prepare and approve a plan. That's where we are tonight. We've been working with the other two municipalities for two years to come with the plan that we have tonight for your approval. The plan, we have to continue uh, preparing it and uh, we will exercise at least once a year, more often, if possible. And by the way, the provincial exercise, the province wants to do it every year. This year it's Brunswick Alpha, and next year it'll be uh, Beta or Bravo. I'll be retired before we get to Z. <laughs> The next uh, step, if you wish, the three municipalities were working on a mutual plan 
of uh, mutual assistance in the next few months will come to see you for the approval of an agreement when there is an emergency between the municipalities we could help mutually if need be not necessarily the last but an important point is the declaration of state of local emergency i want to take a few minutes to talk about that point is the responsibility of the responsibility to declare a local state of emergency if need be by the way when we declare a local state of emergency it's only for seven days that expires after seven days we can stop it before but after seven days if we need it any longer we have to declare another one we think it's only for extraordinary powers a lot of municipalities believe that we can declare to have financial assistance that is not the case as you see presently the provincial government has announced financial assistance and they did not declare a local state of emergency it's to give extraordinary power for instance if we need to evacuate people if we need to destroy some structures if we need to uh, the, the only time we do that is if the citizens are not cooperating with the directive of the municipality municipalities very seldom that this happens normally citizens cooperate well also to declare state of emergency could help us in the protection against civil liabilities the municipal uh, the emergency municipal plan is required by the province it's the law to have a plan it's a plan that uh, uh, allow us to manage different uh, tragedy it's not to manage a nice storm but the consequences of the storm uh, uh, electricity power failure or something similar the plan discuss the role and responsibility of each plan uh, each person in the plan i think it's a it's an asset uh, in every uh, plan once again, the municipality has a legislative responsibility. We meet the standard, but the three municipalities, we wanted to go beyond that. We are over the standard. We adopted the emergency management of commandment. That is international in the States. It's the law. They have to use it. In Canada, it's optional. We saw fit to use that system. We're one of the first regions in New Brunswick that decided to use that system. So it's very effective to manage the resources. The plan talk about the uh, alert system. Last week we celebrated the National Public Safety Week and Wednesday. I hope you all have your alert on TV, radio. This year uh, from April we added another component that is on cell phones or mobile uh, items the way operates the municipal government the provincial government can uh, target some tower and if your cell or your mobile uh, phone is uh, attached to it you will get the alert it's based on the tower uh, it doesn't matter if you're a visitor or whoever you may be if you're close to the tower and a message is sent you'll catch it about six o'clock last wednesday if you didn't get it there is a website on alert you can see if your mode of, of telephone accepts these uh, alert if not it's time to have an upgrade on your phone of course part of our plan we have a, 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 an emergency we have the uh, fireman department on Gova and in Dieppe. That is the second uh, emergency. The plan is one thing. The physical place is another thing. And as you mentioned, if you said the plan this weekend, we analyzed 32 risks uh, that could happen, occur in our municipality. Of course, the chances of having an avalanche in Dieppe are not that great but flooding and uh, icing storm is very realistic what is obvious in the plan is the cooperation if ever there is a, a large emergency we'll need the other two 
the three municipalities will have to work together to manage that plan. This is the theme of this plan, cooperation, being sure we work together to settle and serve and protect our citizens. I could not pl talk about the emergency plan. We're talking about the responsibilities of each one, responsibility of the council, responsibility of each one of us. Each citizen uh, are responsible to be self-sufficient for 72 hours. Maybe 72 hours means three days and three nights. 72 hours doesn't seem very long, but three days and three nights seems longer. So we have a kit with water, clothing, food to be self-sufficient for three days and three nights. It's the responsibility of the citizen to do that. Even if we don't have many emergencies in the region, we should prepare ourselves. It could happen. On the website, the true municipalities can update. In closing, a recommendation tonight for the approval of this plan. So a review accepted the plan a few weeks ago. Last mon mon Monday, Moncton approved it. Tonight, we're asking the city council to approve this plan. This is the presentation. If there's any question, comments, uh, Question, comment, ladies and gentlemen. Mrs. Arsenal, thank you, Your Worship. Chief, did you say if we didn't get the alert Wednesday, we should we should contact you or somebody else. This is a national system. We'll have to go on the website on alert, EN alert, alert ready in English, and see if your mode of mobile phone uh, operates. Some model d doesn't operate. If it functions, there's a way of reaching the organization to see why you didn't get it. You should have had a TV, radio, and telephone, or your mobile uh, equipment. If you call me, I can give you the directive, but I can't fix your, your cell phone. Thank you. Because look at that. Thank you, Your Worship. I assume that most operational plan in emergency uh, cover uh, each municipality, but the app probably has the most serious point that could, uh, the most serious aspect of the app to have an emergency would be a flood from the Pentecodiac River. And the dates up, date, up to date for all of that, and can, can the, does the existing plan uh, suffice? Yes and yes. <laughs> The first thing is, yes, the plans are up to date. In 2013, the city adopted the climatic change plan, and it mentioned the worst case. What would happen is Sax Pigail, what would happen if we had another Sax Pigail? Where are the floods? The plan would consider that, of course. The uh, province of New Brunswick, we had a plan. We started with the province to say that all the municipalities have a similar plan. I wouldn't say that. We're one of the first that adopted that plan. So there's catching up to do. Things have changed in the last few years. We're ready. And what we have to think, well, it's a high level plan. So there's a lot of details. We have a plan for the airport, a plan for our water system. There are plans for specific systems. We can't share because of uh, phone number, contact uh, persons. But we, in our winter, flooding and uh, power failure are something we look at, seriously. Heating, warm, we have, we don't have serious uh, a uh, hurricane, but we have uh, high heat and criminal activities. It's happened in our region, so there are many cases. Avalanches are not uh, 
serious in that region, but the analysis of the flooding of Pitagoric River has been done in 2013. It's still current. They had planned until 2021. Thank you. Thank you. So I remember one of the elements is the question of building and planning that is not allowed under the level of uh, 10.5 meters now in the municipality. So we're good for a few years. It was an excellent debate, which was well presented also to the public for those who were directly impacted by that decision, those who own properties. People are very well warned. It was a big sale not long after. No further question. Thank you for your presentation. And you did it so well that your helper has nothing to say. The pleasure. Next item on uh, public transport, we talk about the uh, City of the Epp Network. Mr. Dr. Thank you, worship members of council, dear colleagues, uh, citizens. So, a small uh, presentation for tonight. We had the report destination 2040 and the report of transit consulting that shows a gap of services between the and Moncton and last uh, fall or during the last budgetary service adopted a budget with the addition of 2,000 hours of service from 2018. And then we asked Kodiak Transit to present some scenarios the most worthwhile, what to do with the 2,000 hours. We analyze this scenario. You have them in your package for the benefit of the citizens, those listening to us. We want to present our analysis, and we want a decision from the council to be able to inform Kodiak Transit tomorrow. That's the deadline for the uh, next uh, plan that would start in, tw in July. So... Kodiak Transpo presented six scenarios. There were also additional uh, options. Other option, further to your comments, so at the end of the line, what Kodiak Transpo presented is scenario A, to modify the frequency, to double the frequency of 95 Champlain, 93rd Champlain, and 95 Amiro during the uh, main time of the week, according to scenario A for option 95 Amiro. We look at different options, and here's the analysis. Well, one, one of the scenario was to bonify the service with the present uh, itinerary of 95 to go from 60 minutes to 30. A consistent in our approach, we since 2012, we wanted to reduce the duration of uh, the trip. One of the disadvantages is uh, that we don't add new service for the sector uh, beyond Fox Creek uh, Street to J.F. Bourgeois. Another scenario that was proposed or studied is the extension of uh, 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 route 95 HP during the week up to Dover, avoiding Melanson Street at Fox Creek Road. So the advantage of this is that we add new service uh, uh, out of a uh, busy time of the day, which is non-existent. We have had access to Dover Park for events, and we ask we answer a request that was made. We eliminate the service at Melanson and Fox Creek Road uh, outside of busy time of the day. You ask us to look at the figure. The figure we were given with Kodiak Tra Transpo is the best estimate. There are parameters with that. 
it's the best estimate uh, of figures, as we explained to you, as to the uh, meters on the bus. Maybe we don't have bus from the app there being maintained. Maybe it can trick the figures. Nevertheless, these are the average they give us. As a disadvantage also, there would be no addition to the Dover Road to Dieppe Bourgeois. If we extend the uh, Road 95 to Dover, but from Dover to Dieppe uh, Bourgeois, their service at the high uh, traffic level, but now there would be none. We add the, the, the frequency to 45 minutes instead of the objective of 30 minutes. So a few disadvantages of this scenario. The other scenario that was looked at is to modify the bus service at the present 95 from 9 to 3 o'clock, but to add the uh, service out, outside the high uh, traffic time between Fox Creek and JF uh, Bourgeois. That's some, so the advantage of this is that we would be doubling the frequency on f uh, 95, we add a consistent new service uh, to expand Fox Creek to GM Bourgeois. There's a, a balance of the level of service that exists presently in the two sectors. Presently, there's a greater service uh, on the Lakebird side than Dover. And what it does is like we do with Lakebird, we are able to evaluate the statistics to see if we are at uh, such a request to go from a six passenger van to possibly a 15 passenger van or the bus. So we are able to obtain these uh, figures. But the disadvantage though, is if we don't have a uh, out of high traffic uh, circle, then park at Dover Park, this will be outside the high uh, traffic time. Uh, but during a uh, the daycare center, there was a request, but the request was not very great. Of course, uh, we could add service from 9 to 3 o'clock, but there won't be any service from a 6, bonafide service on the 95 from 6.30 to 9.30. We'll have it from 9 to 3, but not necessarily at night for the, that uh, piece of the... Uh, but the recommendation of the administration based on... 90, on tragic notified, we can modify the bus service presently from 9 to 3, we double the service, and we add the van uh, the, fa the van service uh, outside the high and uh, level traffic between Fox Creek and Jeff Bourgeois. I go to scenario A, option for uh, 93 Champlain. We talk about the Boulevard Dieppe and Lakeburn. So obviously the recommendation of Kodiak that was a bona fide service with the present service is similar to the 95 service. We double the frequency 16, 30 minutes uh, uh, of uh, heavy traffic. We keep the consistency and we maintain the service with the event up to the municipal limit, which we have presently. Disadvantage, of course, is if we have uh, 30 minutes uh, of uh, high traffic, the time will not allow us to have 30 minutes with the van. Maybe we can work a little bit on that. At 60 minutes of service uh, out of high traffic uh, level, and we'll have to uh, specify if we want to go to something else. The other option that was looked at because it was a request is to extend the uh, route 93 Champlain uh, up to Loret and Charlesville during the week when the bus uh, comes on Champlain instead of turning right on the Boulevard that she would pursue up to the intersection of Loret, come back on Charlesville and then choose either Diab to turn right or Pascal as she does presently to come back to Champlain Place. This is what was proposed. The advantage of this, of course, is we made a recurring uh, request from residents from Lakebird to see the return of a bus service. 
an advantage is that we are able to do some economy, some savings. We will eliminate the uh, service on demand, and we add service uh, on Champlain Street beyond the Dieppe Boulevard, bet between Boulevard Dieppe going to the airport. There's small business. Uh, there was a, a request of a call center three years ago. They would have liked to have a service that would be close to them. Presently, they use it and they walk. It's within the 500 meters, but it would be much better for them, of course. Some disadvantage is if we go back, if, we, if the bus goes back to the intersection, we think we have to eliminate the service of the, uh, the van beyond that region. We would eliminate it from uh, the corner to the center of the, of the of city. It would leave, uh, leave a vacuum in an area that would not be serviced. Uh, a parentheses with the finance that comes from the federal, the federal, and the participation of the provincial for bonification of this uh, uh, public transport. There are target to reach. The target is that we have 90 to 95 percent of the population that would be within. Uh, uh, array of uh, 500 meters if we reduce the service somewhere it takes us uh, away from these targets here if we eliminate the the van during a high level of traffic we would lose it so it's a disadvantage we improve the frequency of the service however but it's not 30 minutes it would be 45 minutes instead and it could make us increase the request and the, uh, the the transport adapted as it is today. Some users of the vans have a reduced mobility, so if the service is not close to their home, we may have to go and service them uh, in another way. Another scenario that we look at is to extend, expand the service, the bus, up to that intersection, but maintain the van to the limit of the town. That's one thing you ask us to look at, of course, as, a, as an advantage. As previously, we would have the addition of the service uh, on Champlain Street. Uh, sorry, to add the service on Champlain beyond the uh, Boulevard Dieppe, it would, would maintain the service uh, past the intersection to the limit of the, of the city. A disadvantage is that uh, our opinion is it's not the best use of public funds because we had the van that serviced that section from this from this section to the limit and the van didn't need a require all that time she would come and wait for the bus the bus had a, a longer itinerary and when we did a private project and we reduce it we said well to bonify the two the van can make it to the co-op which make it that the bus won't have a long uh, duration and we would reduce the frequency that's why we're saying if we do it this way we can do it but we will have a van that'll be waiting and the bus will take longer and we said maybe it's not the best use of public funds the way we see it our recommendation, based on the recommendation of Kodiak Transpo, is to go with the modification of the service at the present itinerary, 93 from 9 to 3, to maintain uh, off uh, heavy traffic uh, time and offer the service that are offered for the van service. So, this is uh, all the scenario. We try to make it as simple as possible. And to be as transparent as possible, maybe we miss something, but I think that it's quite consistent and we hope that it can help you and explain and maybe inform you better as to the decision you have to make tonight. It may not meet all the, requ the requests and all the needs that you wanted to have, but as I said before, we see this as a first step a first step of uh, many more in the future. But as we talk to you, we have deadline with cardiac transport. We have to inform them if we want to make it by July 15th, we have to tell them by tomorrow. According to them, it's the best investment 
it's the best return on our investment by going with the proposed recommendation. The last thing is that we know there are needs on Saturday and Sunday, other needs that are not there at night. These are things that we proposed to go back to the community. We wanted to do it this time, but we realized quickly with the scenario that we had heard a lot of these things. So we hope in the fall for the next phases that could be forthcoming in years to come, that maybe we could have that in the community. This is what is presented to you tonight. I'm available if you have any questions or comments. Thank you, Mr. Shah. Questions from the counselors. Mr. Cadet, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, 95, we'll talk about the advantages. It meets uh, the uh, questions from two uh, citizens. The two persons are asking us to have that service, but I'm sure that the residents of that ward, if we approach them and ask them if they want to have a regular bus service, like other region of the city of Dieppe, they probably would support that. I don't think that a change of route is based on two citizens that make a request. I would have liked to see if there would not be a possibility for the 95, because I know that Councillor Thibodeau had a discussion on that issue to see if we could, from the fall, have a period of three or four months. There is a cycle uh, within Kodiak. We can change things every four months. If we could not have a pilot project, it would bring the bus to Lorette to see if there will be an improvement uh, in the service of the people in that area. And then we could make a true decision and educate ourselves on the need of having a bus service in that area. Of course, the van service meets uh, the need of uh, the people in that area. I, I used it and we feel it's not really a, a mode of communication. It's a minivan and we have to jump over the chairs to get in the back. If there was a possibility of a regular bus, there was one before, it would certainly be well supported by the people. I'm not saying it's guaranteed. That's why I wish that we would consider that we could put a period of four or five months and let uh, the people who are there uh, check to see if there is a need in that world. Those are my comments on that. We've had several meetings and there will be more because the people will not abandon the idea of having a service that go through the, their area. Thank you. Mr. Thibodeau, thank you, Worship. Well, I want to support suggestion made by Mr. Godet because I believe that there are periods of the year where people would use more the public transport and the same comments as Mr. Gaudet, I found it uh, ill-advised to target two citizens when we know that it's two citizens that are uh, louder that talk about it. It's normal that some people uh, appoint themselves as spokesperson, but there are other citizens who need the service as well. The other thing, I wish you would explain the change of route uh, if, uh, for the hospital and university in the recommendation of Kodiak Transpo. 
One of the challenges we have is the number of correspondents that is needed uh, at Champlain, Place Champlain. One of the challenges that we ask them to look at is to see if there would not be a more direct access to hospitals and University of Moncton. In their analysis, in Kodiak, they propose, and it's in your resolution for tonight, they propose to combine one of their routes. They amended 64B, they would combine with 95 in the app. If we are on Route 95, and we know there's several nursing homes or a senior home, on 95, they would avoid taking Champlain to CF Champlain. It would allow them to take the bus, make a stop, but remain in the bus, and then the bus will continue and go to Moncton Hospital and uh, George Dubois and the University of Moncton campus. So that improvement of service, they see it in a good eye. And what is more interesting is cost us zero to do it. It's a free change. It's a, a permanent uh, improvement. It's to take the resources we have and make a service with no cost to us in the city of Moncton. It's a benefit uh, with the analysis that we did on that. If I can answer the question, I'm sorry that uh, we targeted two citizens, that was not the case. We, it's just to show the needs that uh, we receive with a call center and whatnot. You are right. If we were to ask the people, we did not do that exercise. Specifically, the intention was to show what we heard, that it'd be the call center on, on Champlain or the residence. So, I'm sorry, that was not the intention to uh, target anyone. We wanted to mention we had contacts and needs that were expressed by these people. I thought you were done. Sorry. We talk about the exercise of participation uh, of the citizens in the fall for future uh, plans. There are several needs uh, in the DEP network. Even by adding this, uh, adding hours, we have 6,000 hours less than Moncton. We can do something. Service Saturday and Monday, we can modify the service. Like at high traffic level, we could go back to the community with different scenario and try to see what are the more pressing needs. We have ideas, so does Kodiak. And uh, we have uh, a plan that goes back to 2014. We should have a discussion either by the public. We're not in the details as to the tools to be used, but it would be interesting before we make uh, future changes to have an echo from the community to the different scenario. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dupedo, Mr. Leblanc. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to have explanation on uh, Route uh, 95. The recommendation is that we, that the route remain the same. Yes, from nine to three o'clock, the route goes to 30 minutes. Yes. And the addition of the van service uh, uh, at high traffic hours, I thought, it was at the extreme limit of municipality as far as Fox Creek. Could we clarify the van uh, service, what we have now and what we are uh, planning in the recommendation? There is a van service during the week uh, at high traffic uh, time only. What we propose is to add service from nine to three o'clock during the week. The, the service of the van is the same, but we add to the Ruvin. But we turn on GF Bourgeois because it's within the 500 meters and there's no customers beyond that. But we have customers who live on CF Bourgeois. It's, it's an addition for the users of that sector from 9 to 3 o'clock at the time when there's no service at this time. Presently, the van service is only for 
high uh, level of traffic time yes and to service some clients and right now we will go we propose to go at uh, uh, off uh, busy time hours yes that thank you very much thank you Mr. other questions no more lights so thank you for the presentation and uh, we have a resolution that is forthcoming that would be debated later on thank you number eight questions by members of the public none so adoption of minutes starting with a regular council meeting of april the 23rd we have a motion to adopt that one. Mr. Ella, move. Seconded by Mr. Leblanc. And the question. No question. Are those in favor of uh, approving the minutes of uh, April 23rd? Say aye. Contrary minded, nay. Carried. 9.2. Special council meeting held on April 30th last. Uh, the shortest meeting in the history of, of the municipality. We'll find the offer for intergenerational complex move by uh, Councillor Cormier, seconded by Councillor Leblanc. The question. All those in favor say aye. Country minded nay. Carried. That brings us to 10 that uh, talks about uh, motion, memorandum, and nomination, 10.1 administration. Mr. Malanson, thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first uh, issue policy, EXPD uh, 1, financial incentive for real estate. We approved a few years ago in 2015 to an incentive uh, policy for the development of the downtown on property belonging to the municipality following evaluation of expansion DEP and management. It was recommended and approved by the board of directors of expansion DEP to, why, to expand the incentive uh, uh, program and it was identified by the main program that was uh, identified by EXPD. What does that bring to the elements? Is that on a building, uh, three stories minimum, going up to six stories, the percentage of incentive would be allowed for the developer who is uh, making uh, construction would be reimbursed on the payment of his property tax. Another element of incentive is a, uh, an underground parking would allow to make a contribution of $10,000 per space created on the ground for the building on the, ter on the property of the city downtown. It's for approval. You have a map uh, that identifies the territory that is privileged. Uh, it's up to you to determine which card you want to choose. And once you've approved it, we will make it a duty through expansion the app to promote it, to meet the developers and to make a good promotion to uh, invite development in our downtown. It's for recommendation tonight. Thank you for the reading of the resolution. Ms. Arsenal. Thank you, Worship. That council accept that policy X PD1 entitled financial incentive for real estate densification adopted on October 13, 2015, be repealed and replaced by policy expansion at the 1 2018 entitled financial incentive for real estate densification of the downtown core as shown in Appendix A or D. It's up to the council to decide which one. Attached on a memorandum dated April the 11th. So we can 
take uh, Appendix A if there is a debate, if we have to change, we'll change. I so move. Fine. Appendix A. Dated, uh, don't have the date, April, April the 11th, 2018. Move by Mr. Snow, seconded by Mr. Corbier. On the question, Mr. Ayla. Thank you, Worship. It's a policy to uh, encourage the promoter to come on our downtown. How do we do it? How will we promote? That is what is important for me. One of my biggest worries is the promotion to make sure it's really important that all our business people know to make sure that they are all on the uh, same basis that they have access to an incentive and I hope the incentives are open to all the business people. And two, just to clarify, Appendix A and on page 66, it's Appendix A, no, it's Appendix on page 66. On page 66, it's Appendix D. Appendix D, okay. And Appendix A is on page 50. So it's included the, the three, the three entrances are on Acadia uh, Street, corner of Chablain, I mean, oh, and extension of college. All right, okay. So on the promotion, how well expansion the app how how do they promote? We know all the developers, the promoters uh, in downtown. They will commit to meet them individually, and also at that time maybe to share with them on uh, potential uh, projects. Uh, we have a buzz that some things have been discussed. There's some interest at that uh, level. We will have a press release that will talk about this initiative. The first step for expansion the app it has a mandate to meet other developers who have the potential of develop, development in downtown. Will we accept certain number uh, of uh, piece of land per year if the policy is a success and everybody wants to develop? Is there an amount? A coin? The advantage for the municipality is that we reimburse only after development is done. So the municipal risk for the municipality is minimum. We aim to have as many as possible. And uh, reimbursement will be done once it's completed. The risk is almost zero. Thank you. Any other question? Mr. Godet, thank you, Worship. It's not a question of Appendix A or D. I would uh, recommend that the council, I don't know if it can be done. Is it through an amendment? Because the proposal, the, the recommendation is to agree. We have to agree on the appendix. I strongly move that we go with D because D includes part of Champlain Street between Paul and Acadie and also the part between Alain Gillette and Acadie Avenue. It's part of that. It goes past uh, Market Avenue. I have the net impression that there are opportunities of uh, development in that area. There are old houses that are in commercial zones and zones of uh, development where there could be an agglomeration of houses uh, that, that, that would represent considerable project and it is for that reason. I think it would be opportune, even if it's not part and parcel it, of what we call downtown, it would nevertheless be part of uh, a very busy area and an area that can easily be developed. 
and similar incentives uh, would help us uh, with the parking because there are incentives to develop training inside and underground the whole issue of structure of the building that would be compatible with what we require inside downtown so we go to downtown by four different arteries and i think these two arteries are very important for the people that go towards the city and if we talk on a long-term basis with the possibility where there would be a deviation of Acadi towards Paul Street from the marsh we've already talked about that it would structure well with Chablet and Acadia inside that uh, change and for that reason that I would recommend that we go with Appendix D it won't cost any more money to the city only <clears throat> when the people build their building the reimbursement are made within the taxation system it is to our benefit to include these two thank you worship i let the discussion go on for a while and And yet it'd be a matter of defeating the emotion in which we'll vote and if uh, logically sometimes uh, mun municipal council don't act logically but I'm used to seeing us uh, work logically if we defeat one we'll have another motion for appendix D Mr. Cormier Thank you, Your Worship. I want to say, in spite of the fact that I see the value of uh, Councillor Gaudet's uh, idea, uh, we could bring too many things in the artery and we'll have a heart attack. I'll support A for that reason. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Other questions, comments? Mr. Colby, no. Shall I? Second time. I support my colleague, Mr. Gaudet. I see Appendix D bring us some opportunities. As you just said, it's an investment in our city. It's an investment from three to six uh, stories. It's important investments and the intensification of uh, downtown is uh, uh, really important i can see that within 25 years we'll have the extension of paul street from akadi to jeanette for that reason it's part and parcel of the center where we live and it's to give a chance to for the expansion of uh, paul street there's definitely some opportunities on Pinnacoliac River, which has invested over $70 million in that river. It's an asset that will become more and more important. It's for that reason, as Councillor Gaudet just said, he just, uh, he gave a lot of reasons. There's too many reasons for not to go with it. And that's why I will support it. To clarify, intersection of Alain Gillette and Paul Street that is contained in both proposal. The only danger that I would like to raise on the question of including downtown the sector of uh, Street Champlain Street going towards Paul Street, it's it's still owned by different persons it could be compl 
it could complicate the purchase of land and uh, serve us uh, badly. It's hard to predict the future, but it's a danger that does exist that could cost us uh, dearly. And could limit the development in that area. There was a merging or amalgamation uh, of, la of property for a major development. It would be maybe time to do a rezoning. If someone comes and by besides uh, Street uh, Beauséjour, going down or up, it, well, maybe it's a, a concern that I would have that it could complicate the sale of property. I'll let you think about that, and I hope my comments will bring out more comments. We'll make a vote. Mr. Thibodeau, Your Worship, I was thinking exactly the end of Champlain that goes to Paul Street. I think that we have to be careful how we subdivide that. But however, when we look at the other one, let's see, page 66. This is A. How come I have two? Page 66 and 50. 66. Your Worship. On page 56 that you have is the area that was proposed with an addition that we brought initially with the entrance. Uh, they were intersection of uh, uh, College Chabla and uh, Ala Gillette Academia. So this is what was brought. And at the last revision is what you have a 66 that was put forward by the Municipal Council. I found Appendix A. And does not include the end of Chabla up to Paul, but the other end. I think we could go to Gillette. We had the entrance. The document is not attached. All right. That is what I would privilege. I would favor. Would be what? Appendix A, but by changing the entrance door and Acadie. In both proposals A and D, the door, uh, uh, entrance door to she is there. Mr. Sano, thank you, Your Worship. I agree with Mr. Cormier because it's true. If you expand too widely, you uh, take away the importance of the middle. So you lose your importance. At the same time, what the worship said, we have to be careful that we could put ourselves in a situation where it will be difficult for all those involved, the city and the people who own those houses. So I tend to believe maybe it would be better to stay with Appendix A, but have the entrance, uh, the door of entrance to Gillette and the other comments, question. It's not with vote. Others in favor of the resolution as presented, which means Appendix A, say aye. All those against? Raise your hand for the motion is defeated. For the, if you would read the motion by including D. Thank you. 
Thank you. The council accepts the policy XPD1, entitled Financial Incentives for Real Estate Densification, accepted on October 13, 2015, be repealed and replaced by policy EXPD-1 uh, 2018, entitled Financial Incentives for Real Estate Densification of Downtown Core, as shown in Appendix D. Attached to the memorandum dated April 11, 2018, I so move. Moved by Councillor Gaudet, seconded by Councillor Brito. Uh, the question. We heard about all those favor. Say aye. Country minded, ne? Motion carried. And it carried and adopted by the Municipal Council. Ten point one point two, Mr. Manasso. Here you have a directive uh, ratification. It was given in close uh, in camera, and so gave properties located on Lorraine and Dubois Street. Purchases. Uh, they've agreed to give four hundred fifty thousand dollars on three properties, two on Lorraine and one on Dubois from the New Brunswick Housing Society, and this is in the global plan to continue to do the transition and to secure the land according to an agreement we have with Housing New Brunswick of houses that are on location. We have a transfer that is identified because we had money available from last year, and the transfer is identified. It's for public approval. For the reading of the proposal, Mr. LeBlanc. Thank you, Your Worship. The council accept to pay expansion the up, up to five hundred fifty thousand for the purchase of land identified under PID seven zero one two nine three four one zero zero nine eight nine eight four eight and seven zero one two nine four two four and located on Lorraine and Dubois Streets from New Brunswick Housing Corporation and authorize the expenditure be defrayed from an account of. 3-3-35-58-7622 general capital budget line expansion that council authorizes a budget transfer in the amount of 300000 from account 7-4-20-12-8920 general capital refer to account number 3-3-35-58-7622 general capital budget Land purchase, I shall move your worship. Move by Councillor Leblanc, seconded by Councillor Rana. And the question. No question. Not those in favor? Say aye. Good reminded, nay? Boy, carry it. Next item. Program. Asset management program last year in the city of the app was approved with program with the FCM, a pilot project. We're here to be able to submit a request uh, uh, approved by council for the management of our assets. Uh, it's a program that goes up to 80% of the admissible up to $50,000. And we have KPMG service. Uh, and we also asked at that time the cause of phase two. If someday we wanted to go ahead with it, we recommend to hold the service of the same consultant with the, the involvement they have with us uh, since phase one. So it's to proceed with the request. And when approved, we'll give a contract to KPMG. For the reading, uh, Mr. Brito, please read uh, the motion. That council authorized the finance department staff to submit a funding application under the Federation of Canadian Municipalities uh, Municipal Asset Management Program, which reimburses 90% of eligible costs up to maximum $50,000. Council authorized the hiring of KPMG at the cost $60,000 procedures, the conditional on the approval of the above mentioned funding application, and also authorized the expenses to be taken from 1 2 20 21 25 General Operating Budget Administration, other. I so move, Your Worship. Moved by Councilor Bidou. 
Ce que Dieu cache un as, no on the question. Mr. Leblanc. Your worship. I tried to understand the resolution at I don't know if I don't see clearly. They reimburse 90% of admissible up to $50,000. And it's costing us $60,000 to get it. So we have to pay the difference. So it would really cost us $10,000. That contract is signed with KPNG in the city of yet. All right, I want to confirm that. Okay, thank you. No other question, all those in favor, say aye. Could have reminded me. Carried as presented. Budget transfers for budget software. City of the, finally, it's been discussing for some time on the potential software. So tonight we're here to recommend to proceed with uh, the transfer of budgets. Last year, we put in reserve the amount of money that were necessary. We chose Westica, that is uh, the organization that would facilitate the, the work and reduce uh, the margin of error. We ask you to do a budgetary transfer for 32,500. That will be able to sign an agreement with Questica for a software $49,000 for the purchase and support the fee for the next five years. The budgetary transfer requires the approval of, of, of council and then we sign an agreement with Questica. Moncton uses that software and they're very satisf satisfied at Treasurer, check it out if you have any question that well that's the person who could answer it for the reading of the resolution mr thibodeau thank you your worship that council authorize a budget transfer in the amount of thirty two thousand five hundred dollars from account number seven dash four dash twenty dash twelve dash eighty nine ten General Operating Reserve Funds to account number 1-2-20-21-2565 General Operating Budget Equipment Program IT System. That council authorize a budget transfer in the amount of 17500 from account number 7-4-20-12-8930 Water and Sewer Operating Reserve uh, to the following accounts. 12,500 to the account 2-2-90-21-2565 water and sewer operating budget equipment program IT system water and $5,000 to account number 2-2-95-21-2565 water and sewer operating budget equipment program IT system sewer. I so move your worship, move by Councillor Tibido, seconded by Councillor Ada. Other question? I have some. Treasurer knew it was coming. Does that allow us to the payroll, to, to do the payroll, number one? And number two, does it allow us to transfer electronically or will we operate with checks uh, for our suppliers? Will I have a, pa a pile of checks to sign Friday? This has nothing to do with your second part of your question. The software that we presently have, the uh, soft dynamic, has the capability of doing IFT, electronic fund transfer that we have yet to activate. So it's like a phase three, if you wish, of the software that we approve. Uh, but for your first question, yes, you have a salary uh, operational uh, and the capital. And uh, thank you. Thank you, worship. Must we pass a resolution to purchase the software? We don't have to, because it's under $50,000. Thank you. 
it's just a matter of applying the proper uh, budget to the proper account. Other questions? If not, all those in favor of the resolution say aye. Contrary reminded, nay. Carried. Next item, uh, 10.3.1, the presentation of the fire chief. We're ready with the two neighboring uh, municipalities and co the cooperation is continuing with the measure, the emergency measures plan. For the reading of the resolution, Mr. Leblanc, one of our former uh, fire uh, Volunteer, with pleasure, I move that council let out the Municipal Emergency Measure Plan dated May the 1st, 2018. Moved by Councillor Leblanc, seconded by Councillor so no other question. All those in favor say aye. Country reminded me. Carried as presented. Engineering 10.4.1, Mr. Bernalso. The project of College Street expansion, we have an expropriation file. Commissioner, Mrs. Isabel Pola, Commissioner in Expropriation, uh, is uh, indicating her intention of expropriating the land 344991. Also, that we authorize the expenditure to uh, according to the amount and the amount was uh, to complete the steps that was undertaken for the reading of the motion mr Goodet. thank you worship we resolved that the city of the app having received and considered the report of the expropriations uh, advisory officer miss uh, isabel pola dated april 17 2018 confirm its notice of intention to expropriate and that a notice of expropriation be issued with respect to the lands described uh, in the notice uh, filed on March 12, 2018, and the land title office, New Brunswick, is number 37844991. That council authorized the expenditures of which the amount will be determined following the conclusion of the agreement be defrayed from account number. 3-3-35-50-7621 General Capital Budget College Street Extension I so move Move by Councillor Goodet Seconded by Councillor Thibodeau Other question? No question All those in favor say aye Country minded nay Motion is uh, adopted as presented 10.4.2. Jim so in the case of the infrastructure improvement project, there was a uh, Melanson Road between the, the two street du Moulin following a tender call, uh, two bidders, and we went with uh, McDonald paving for about six hundred forty-nine thousand four hundred plus HSC. Also, for the engineering service, uh, HP service incorporated for an amount of six nine thousand plus HSD. So that'll be taken from the account of uh, capital, uh, and the. Uh, Undertaken be shortly for the reading of the motion, Mr. Arsenal. Thank you, Worship. That council award the tender of the project entitled Melanson Road Trail Extension, Mula Street to Fox Creek Road, to the lowest bidder, McDonald Paving and Construction Limited, with the cost of $649,400 plus HST. Also award the tender for engineering services retaining the said project to EXP service incorporated the cost of $69,000 plus HST and authorizes these expenditures be defrayed from account 3-3-35-58-7636 general capital budget trail Melanson Road. I so move your worship. 
Moved by Mrs. Irish and all, seconded by Councillor Limla. On a question. No question. All those in favour? Say aye. Can be reminded. Carried. 10.5 nomination for expansion. Yep. Yeah. Councillor Tibedo, please. That. Thank you, Worship. The Council appoint the following persons as members of Expansion Diep and Board of Directors. One citizen appointed by the Mayor, Gillen Gova, for another one-year term, ending June 30, 2019. One staff, Representative Alain Duguay, Director of Communication Department, for a one-year term, ending June 30, 2019. I so move, Your Worship. Move by Councillor Thibodeau, seconded by Councillor Alla. Other question. All those in favor say aye. Country minded nay. Carried. 10.6. Uh, public transit additional services for the reading. Super do. That council. Accept cardiac transport recommendation to increase the frequency of peak and weekday bus uh, route for routes 98 and 95 coming on the next date. Allow modification cardiac transport schedule plan July the 1st, 2015. That council also accept recommendation to combine Route 95 with a Moncton Road serving hospital and university in Moncton and that council that rise expenditure estimated $200,000 per year be defrayed from account number 1-2-35-67-2670 general operating budget public transport. I saw a movie worship. Moved by Councillor Brido, seconded by Councillor Eisner. Other question? Other question, Mr. Goodet. Thank you, Your Worship. I would like to move an addition, a fourth paragraph to that motion, and read as follows. An amendment, an amendment. Move an amendment? Okay, sorry. That Kodiak Transport with the City of Diab examine the possibilities of implementing a pilot project of four months for a route uh, of bus 93 to to go up to the intersection of Loret and Charlottesville in the near future. Is there a second there? Seconded by Councillor Thibodeau. On, on the amendment, all those in favor say aye. Oh, yes. Good reminder, nay. So, carried. Now, the motion as amended. All those in favor say aye. Good reminder, carried as amended. We'll go on to the next item, 10.7, Acceptance, Planning Advisory Committee's view. Yes, uh, this file with the plan that was revised for, down, for downtown, we had to ask the opinion of the Planning Advisory co uh, Committee. So the recommendations are presented is the development and the zoning bylaw. So within our plan of downtown, we ask the council to accept the changes and the zoning map. So it's to establish the last step, and then afterwards we'll have to adopt the municipal, municipal plan. The, the changes that we accepted tonight with Appendix D, will it have an impact on this? Appendix D, it will be clear, it's inclusive. Mr. Sima, may I have an explanation? Mr. Sima, thank you. The zoning and the appendix is not necessarily the same thing. Nevertheless, the requirements as to the height will be three uh, stories high. And 
Thank you. That's what you wanted to say? Okay. That's what I should have done. That's what I should have said. No, no problem. It's clear? It wasn't red. It's not red? How slow? How slow can you be for the reading, <laughs> Mr. Allah? That Council accepted a recommendation made on April the 18th, 2018 by the Planning Advisory Committee concerning proposed changes to the text of the Municipal Development Plan Bylaw and the Zoning Bylaw in view of the new Community Planning Act, Chapter 19, and the Downtown Master Plan as outlined in Bylaw Z-9-2017-1 and Z-10-2017-2. That council accept also the proposed changes to the generalized land use map municipal development plan bylaw and the zoning map zoning bylaw for the property situated on Chaplain Street and identified under PIC PID 7055-1528 portion 00672425900 0067-4387-0067-4587-0087-4840 and 0057-67340 as outlined in bylaw Z-9-2017-1 and Z-10-2017-2 I so move move by Councillor Anna seconded by Councillor Benito other question Question all those in favor of, of the resolution say aye. Contrary reminded nay. Carried. Now uh, municipal bylaws. Bylaws Z 9 2017 1 concerning the municipal development plan for first reading title only. Mr. Leblanc. Good worship. Bylaw Z-9-2017-1, the bylaw to amend a bylaw relating to the City of the App Municipal Development Plan. I move first reading by title only. Move by Councillor Leblanc, sec seconded by Councillor Tibor. No question. No question. All those in favor of resolution say aye. Con Contrary reminded nay. Carried. So it's like first reading by title only. Then we'll proceed with the reading by title only. It's second reading. <coughs> Mr. Leblanc. Bylaw Z-9-2017-1. A bylaw to amend a bylaw relating to the City of the App Municipal Development Plan. I so move in second reading by title only. Move by Councilor Leblanc. Second by Councilor Thibodeau. Under question. No question. All those in favor. Of the resolution say aye. Contrary minded. So Z dash one is accepted in second reading by title only. Now for zoning bylaw Z ten twenty seventeen dash two a first reading. By law dash ten dash uh, twenty seventeen I move that be accepted by title only and seconded by Council Tibido on the question. No question all those in favor say say aye. Country minded nay. Carried first reading by title only, and now let's proceed with second reading by title only. Mr. Blau, bylaw number Z-10-2017-2, a bylaw to amend a bylaw within the city of the app, municipal, 
I move, I move and second it that it be approved. What a question. No question. All those in favor say aye. Good reminded, nay. Carried. So it's second reading by title only for Z1017-2. 12, no, notice of motion, none. So, inquiries and announcements by members of council. And we start tonight with Councilor Gaudet. Nothing tonight, thank you. Councilor Zimla. Thank you, Worship. I'll continue. No announcement tonight. Thank you, Mr. Abla. Mr. Brido. Thank you, Worship. Since spring has arrived, the nice weather has arrived, and people are walking, I would like to repeat once again another item for those who own uh, pets, uh, dogs, especially, you know, those little bags that you pick up after your dog. We don't leave them on the sidewalk. We bring them home and we put it in a bigger garbage. A question of keeping the city clean. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the invitation that I send to all the citizens. Pick up behind your dogs. No one else will pick them up. Please, please. Make service to yourself. Make a service to the publication of the app to keep our city clean. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening. Thank you, Councillor Brido. Councillor Brido. Thank you, Worship. I have nothing tonight. Thank you. Sir Snow. Thank you. Nothing tonight. Thank you, Mr. Sarsno. Mr. La. Two things. As a politician, I'm glad to see that two persons, Liz de Boutier and Pascal Pola, are running for election. Election result. Liz de Boutier is a new colleague on the council in the weeks to come. And also, for potholes, a lot of infrastructure will be built. We we'll talk about uh, infrastructure and similar things. The mayor has worked very hard on projects, uh, intergenerational, the trail leading to Champlain, extension of College Street. We have the Dia Boulevard, the bridge. Medaso and the extension, uh, there'll be a lot of construction in our city. So I hope that uh, our, our people who are responsible for safety, I ask everybody to be patient. There will be a lot of construction in the city. We have to be very aware, vigilant, make sure we can travel on our beautiful uh, roads. The, this morning at Tim Horton Potholes, when will the people start working on the spring work? Because Ella knows is here if there's something he wants to add, but the patching system has, has begun. Some places have been uh, made. It's a job, it's a work that will last several weeks. A plan has been established with the company uh, whose name uh, escaped me. It will go until June, in normal time to fix it. We go by order of priority normally, but the beginning was for the patching of the company. When you start, you need to adjust the uh, people who work for them. So. They don't go on the main highway the first day, so the adaptation phase is made. We'll, make, we'll do the repair that has to be done uh, first, and maybe we'll do some more strategic uh, repair, not only patching, maybe it's a bigger repair if patching will not last for next winter. That's the analysis the team has to, to do. Maybe there are reasons why it's not fixed immediately because there's a more important 
fixing to be done. We have a person who followed this on a daily basis. I can tell you today they were on Gova Street. I saw that. That's it, Ms. Anna. Yes, thank you. So, good evening, uh, everyone. We continue to work hard. Congratulations to Mrs. Le Boutillier for her victory. And her swearing in will be on May the 28th. Uh, the policy and strategy committee will not be held Monday. We decided not to have any in May because there was no demand. The next one will be on the third Monday of June. The next policy and strategy, the next meeting will be for 28 for the swearing-in of the new... Good evening, everyone. Thank you.